introduction of a Scottish deposit return recycling scheme for drinks containers has been a flagship policy of the SNP Green Government. It was meant to go live this August, then the launch was delayed until March next year, and today we were told that it won't now be rolled out until October 2025 at the earliest. That comes in the wake of the UK Government's refusal to allow the scheme to proceed unless it exempted glass bottles. After today's announcement, SCV's political editor Colin Mackay spoke to the First Minister, Hamza Youssef. Is the deposit return scheme dead now? Well, we can't have a separate Scottish scheme, I'm afraid, because the UK government have sabotaged it. Coming in at the 11th hour, they've made unreasonable demands which put Scottish business at a competitive disadvantage and uh, injects a whole level of uncertainty that we're not prepared uh, to allow uh, Scottish business to, 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 to allow to encapsulate this scheme. So now I'm afraid a, Scottish sep a separate Scottish scheme can't go ahead and we're going to have to align with the UK scheme, which will be October 25 at the earliest. Lorna Slater seems to suggest that it was wrestling. You're saying it's dead. Well, it's paused until October 25. That's the earliest date that we're going to have a UK scheme. What I'm frustrated at is that we are pre prepared for a separate Scottish scheme to go live March the 1st next year. Uh, we now can't do that because of our 11th uh, hour interjection by the UK government. The waste company Biffa say that you can now no longer be relied on as a legislator. Well, again, this is the exact point. This parliament legislated well, you, you, you're for... You're not agreeing with them, are you? Well, what I'm saying is this parliament, of course, legislated, passed regulation uh, for the DRS scheme. We now have a UK government that can overwrite that. That is a serious problem, not just for this scheme, but a very serious problem for devolution in its entirety. Let's now hear how opposition parties reacted to the announcement. Let's be clear, though. The scheme had already failed long before any intervention from the UK government. The statement today reflects the key concern of businesses having a scheme that works across the United Kingdom. I believe we could have saved a great deal of time and energy if the SNP and Greens had listened to those businesses in the first place. It is clear that Scotland is paying the price for two bad governments, both of whom seem more interested in a constitutional fight. Let's remember this is uh, but the fourth delay to the introduction of DRS. Isn't it the case that DRS is just the latest victim of two governments that see political advantage in stoking division and indulging in constitutional spats? The minister who was charged with delivering the scheme is Lorna Slater, who spoke to us from Edinburgh. So Circularity Scotland, which was to run the scheme, it said in response to your statement today that a scheme without, without glass would have been economically viable to go ahead in March 2024. They thought it could work. Why didn't you? The UK, in using the Internal Market Act to block our scheme, did two things. One was the removal of glass, but the other piece of that was the application of some conditions on interoperability. But what that meant was they were, what they said in that is they were going to make us match whatever they pass with their regulations. The thing is they haven't passed their regulations yet. So that puts us in an impossible position. For example, the Scottish Parliament in our regulations, we said that the deposit on a can or bottle would be 20 pence. We don't know what they might do down in England. It might be 10 pence, it might be 15, it might be 30. We just don't know. How can we ask Scottish businesses to comply with regulations that the UK okay, haven't, haven't but even... But what passed? about what Circularity Scotland said today, the group that was set up to run the scheme? They thought, they thought it could go ahead. Schemes without glass can operate. There are a few schemes in the world that do do that. That is possible. The problem is this a question of uncertainty around what the scheme would look like. Because the UK have basically said, the Scottish scheme cannot go ahead, you have to match okay. whatever scheme we but, come but up with, let's... but they haven't told us what that will look okay. like. That's the impossible position that makes us unable to deliver on our original timescale. But, but let's look at the principle here. Um, are you putting politics above the environment? Uh, because Circularity Scotland has also said that even without glass, millions of metal and plastics drinks containers would be recycled, dramatically increasing recycling rates in Scotland and contributing to the country's goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2045. 
That is, of course, the purpose of deposit return schemes around the world. They are a tried and trusted way of reducing litter, of reducing those emissions, so helping us get to net zero, and reducing you know, the costs to local authorities of having to pick up and recycle these materials. That's exactly why we want a deposit return scheme. So why not do scheme. it then? You could do it now. You could do it next year without glass. That because of the second set of conditions that the UK government has imposed on us, they have said we have to ask Scottish businesses to comply with regulations that, that they don't exist yet. That's an impossible thing for me to ask businesses to do. We can't go ahead and ask businesses to put in place investment, to create jobs for a scheme when we don't know what it looks like. The number one thing that every single business that myself and the First Minister spoke to today said was we need certainty. And the UK holds all the cards here. They might not pass the regulations until later this year or, or maybe next year. And some of the things that we don't know about, but for is that example, not a bridge you could fees cross might not even be set by until they set up their scheme administrator, which could be two and a half but, years away. But sure, is that not a bridge that could be crossed in the future? Surely the principle is to try and protect the environment and you could make a real difference now. We had uh, regulations that have been uh, set before Parliament to change the launch date to March 1st, 2024. So we have only a very short period of time to come to any sort of agreement on that. The UK hasn't even set their regulations yet. On the whole issue of uh, glass being exempted, um, nine months after the Scottish Government voted for the DRS scheme, the UK Parliament passed the Internal Market um, Act. At this stage, should you not have considered changing your deposit return scheme, as you would have known that your scheme would have breached this act? In 2019, Alistair Jack, Rishi Sunak, even Douglas Ross, from the, who also sits in the Scottish Parliament, stood for election in Westminster on a manifesto that promised a deposit return scheme that included glass. So the Scottish Parliament went ahead in good faith that we were at that time aligning with what the UK was going to do. They said they were going to do glass. Wales was going to do glass. We, we but, put in place glass. The but UK you did government not, but you didn't ask, glass you didn't out of their for, scheme. You didn't ask for a formal exemption until March this year. So that, that, that is not true at all. That's what the, the UK, UK government, that's have, what the UK government says. You didn't that, ask for a formal exemption until March this year. That isn't accurate. I'll finish the previous point, which is that the UK had glass in their scheme until March 2022. They only removed it from their scheme in March 2022. And up until January this year, their own documentation was saying that devolved nations can make the scope anything they like. So they've changed their mind in between January and May this year. In terms of the exemption being issued for the Internal Market Act, the agreement between governments on matters like this is handled by something called the Common Frameworks. And we first applied for the exemption, started the process for that back in 2021, nearly two years ago. There is no formal uh, ask step in that process. That's something that Alistair Jack has made up, has invented just for the purpose of saying that I didn't do it. In fact, we followed the common framework process exactly at all stages, which has been acknowledged by the UK government, and the stages of that process are online and have been published. So Alistair Jack hasn't been telling the truth then? Alistair Jack has not. Alistair Jack has been single-handedly working to undermine our scheme okay. since February, since he threatened that he would use the Internal Market the, Act exactly as he has done so to torpedo our scheme. Well, all that aside, business are want, businesses in Scotland are wanting to know, will you pay compensation to them? We really appreciate the businesses in Scotland have made a substantial investment in Scotland. In, we think it's in the order of £300 million to get the deposit return scheme going in Scotland. And we are very, very grateful for all the work that they've been doing. We are intending to go ahead with the scheme as quickly as possible. The date that looks most likely is October 2025, so, because that's the date that the UK have committed to. And so that investment will not be wasted. We will be so, working toward launching okay. that scheme. It, there's been a lot of uncertainty about the scheme, criticism about the way it's been handled. You have not enjoyed the confidence of, of many uh, businesses. And the policy that you've been driving has been abandoned for at least two years. Have you ever considered resigning over this? Should you resign over over this? I am in the Scottish Government to deliver for the people of Scotland, to deliver for our environment, and I continue to do that and will continue to do that. So you take more. I am committed to delivering a deposit return scheme for Scotland. It'll be later than we wanted, it will be of less ambition than we wanted, but it is still the right thing to do. I mean, have you considered resigning? Do you take no responsibility uh, for the way this scheme's panned out? 
Scotland's deposit return scheme was progressing very well toward the August 16th launch date. And that included a very well, I don't know if that's entirely true. I think there was quite a lot of pushback from businesses who didn't feel that the Scottish government was communicating them, uh, communicating with them about what they needed to do. They said there was uncertainty. So I'm not sure that it's correct to say that. Many businesses in Scotland, of course, as we know from the substantial investment that's been made, were cracking on and working towards deposit return, including you will have seen reverse spending machines starting to show up in supermarkets. We know some businesses, particularly small producers, did have issues with understanding the scheme, that we needed to improve communications with them, that we needed to make sure we had that certainty to answer all their questions. And we had systems and processes in that we were working steadily through those things. But we did have 95% of the industry signed up. That's so you hundreds of businesses, large and small, okay, and so put their money on the table to get this scheme going. You, you we don't had a working scheme in Scotland ready to go until the UK government torpedoed it. And so this scheme is not happening now until early, the earliest 2025, and you, you take no responsibility for that? At every point, we have worked in good faith through the process with the UK government. We've put in place the scheme administrator, the processes around that in line with the Scottish regulations, and we've worked systematically with industry through all the issues the industry was raising for us. Now, there were some issues on the table that we simply couldn't give certainty on, things like shelf edge labeling, which is a trading standards issue that is for the UK to decide. Um, getting the UK to come up with those sorts of answers in a timely way was a challenge all along. The UK simply isn't able to come up with the answers that we need because they haven't done the background work on getting deposit return scheme going, which is why we're unfortunately having to delay it again because the UK will have to go away and do that work now. Lorna Slater, um, thank you very much indeed for your time this evening.